So episode 3 didn't get taken down by Viacom. It's probably because I used less footage from Avatar, but I want to believe somebody who's responsible for taking down videos saw it at Viacom and was like, oh. Oops. Anyway, yeah, we're on the Avatar journey, and this is episode 7. The four nations, nations lived, lived in, in harmony. harmony. Lived together in harmony, damn it. Then, then everything, everything changed when the Fire, the Fire Nation, Nation attacked. attacked. What is that? Listen. It's so quiet. Aang, are you okay? How could I let this happen? Aang, you didn't let this happen. So in episode 3, I got the first glimpse that Aang actually is someone who's in danger. My false assumption about the show was that he has an unbreakable optimistic spirit, but in episode 3, he discovers that people he cared about were killed by the Fire Nation, and then later in episode 4, it was because of him that that village got burned. So I kind of feel like he's in some kind of spiritual danger, and I'm very, very interested to see where this goes, because it could go in a number of different ways. Part of his character that's building is the fact that he has a heavy burden to carry. It has nothing to do with you. Yes, it does. It's the Avatar's job to protect nature, but I don't know how to do my job. That's why we're going to the North Pole, to find you a teacher. Yeah, a waterbending teacher, but there's no one who could teach me how to be the Avatar. This is interesting because this is a very negative, pessimistic outlook for him. It's almost a defeatist attitude. It's kind of the complete opposite of what you're led to believe about it based on tropes of this kind of character. Probably just feelings of being overwhelmed. Although no one actually has this level of responsibility, I think everyone has experienced this sentiment on some level at some point in their lives. It's pretty common when you become aware there's something you could do. There's something you could do that could make things better or something that only you could do that you should be doing. Realizing that is really scary because you realize you're gonna have to make a lot of effort to get there. And it's probably going to shake up your life in ways you can't even understand. But second, there's also a very real possibility that you'll fail. And the consequences of failure are often very severe. So because it's so scary to take on that responsibility, I think there's this there's always this desire initially to kind of deny it responsibility or deny that it's possible to even do anything. There's nothing I could do, I'm powerless. And then therefore you kind of absolve yourself of having to do anything. But it doesn't feel good when you do that. You you know on some instinctual level that what you're doing is wrong. Uncle, we need to move on. My favorite character, on Uncle. I hated it myself. Oh yeah, <laughs> fire benching. Hey Aang, are you ready to be cheered up? No. Mm -hmm. He's pouting. There's kind of a duality forming between his character. Cheerful Aang, depressing Aang, depressed Aang. My village desperately needs your help. The black and the white spirit. Why is it attacking you? We do not know. Aang, you seem a little unsure about all this. Yeah, yeah Aang's acting different. I don't know anything at all about the spirit world. You know what's bizarre? Okay, this is a little bit off topic. This has actually come up a lot for me in life with people, talking to people about their dreams and their goals. A lot of times people will say, well, I want to be X, but I need to take a class in X. If you really wanted to do something, you could just do it on your own. There are exceptions, of course, but generally speaking, if there's something you want to learn, it's possible to pursue it, at least at first, until you achieve a certain level of mastery and need to, to get higher than that. This episode so far, Aang is making excuses for why he can't do something, but I think it's probably not based on actual feeling that he can't. It's just feelings of inadequacy and not knowing how to proceed. Maybe feeling lost because there's just so much to take on. I have a good friend who is fluent in Japanese and a lot of people ask him, how do I learn Japanese? His answer is, well, you should study it, <laughs> which is kind of obvious. But the thing is when he learned it, he was studying constantly. And a lot of times when people say they want to learn something, they don't actually mean they want to learn it. They mean they want to know it. They don't actually want to do the process of it. They don't want to go through the steps. Or the lack of having some authority figure standing over you telling you exactly how to proceed as an excuse for not doing things we, we want to do or feel we should be doing. It kind of goes back to what we were talking about yesterday about how there's no one to call you. Like nobody will call you for the journey. You just have to kind of start it. You have to find it on your own. Maybe whatever I have to do will just come to me. Yeah, see, that's exactly what I was saying. I think you can do it, Aang. We're all gonna get eaten by a spirit monster. To be fair, Aang has a special circumstance because, like, it's pretty high technical stuff that he's doing, so it's not the same as, like, learning Japanese, but, you know, whatever. You get my point. But it was a very sweet nap. It's funny how you enjoy things more when you're not supposed to be doing them. If anyone can save us, he can. He still shouldn't have to face this alone. That's cool for a few reasons. One, because it speaks well of Sokka, but also because it speaks the limitations of Aang's powers. It looks like the flying Eva units from Evangelion. My uncle's been captured by Earthbenders. This is shaping up into something cool. It's kind of like a, a parallel hero arc. You have Aang's arc, and you also have uh, Zuko's arc. This Zuko thing now is not related to Aang at all. It's just his own thing. So he's not being framed as like counter to Aang. He's just his own, it's his own story, which is kind of cool. I had a thought the other day that maybe Zuko will end up joining their crew. It seems to be setting up that way. I think I would like that because one of my favorite tropes is when an enemy becomes a friend. It's one of the things I like the most. 
You landed right at a shrine or something? And I'm still tired. It's a crafty boy. <laughs> yeah. Crafty boy. Your brother is in good hands. I would be I don't think that's how that went down. Him. Oops. Katara? Katara, I lost him. Wow. No, I'm right here. Oh. I was about to say, why is he blue? Spirit world. All I have to do is figure out what I have to do. But once I do that, no problem. <laughs> That's me literally every day. What? Oh, we can't airbend in the spirit world? I can't airbend in the spirit world. They look like chocobos. So Uncle Eero can see the spirit world. Get to see Uncle Eero do his thing. This is really nice. I like this sequence. It's a calendar, and the light will reach Roku on the solstice. The Avatar. It's a good moment for Zuko. He's gonna choose his uncle. How to get up there? He's just sitting on the top. I'm sure it's no coincidence that he ended up in that bear statue. So I guess the spirit that took Sokka is uh, not so bad. I find myself strongly rooting for Zuko and Uncle Iro, which is cool because they were framed as the villains not six episodes ago. Character development. It's always better when characters are human and relatable. You are the oh, it's spirit of this there. You're upset and angry because your home was burned down. Spirit of the Forest. Reminds me of uh, Princess Mononoke. Great movie. One more problem. The island is in the Fire Nation. That should be fun. <laughs> it's funny how quickly the tone changed. It gets more intriguing the more I watch. Oh, that was a two-parter. Perfect. So this is actually a continuation. It's part two. We're not letting you go into the Fire Nation, Aang. At least not without your friends. <sighs> Seen the Avatar lately? This is shaping up to really be something. A blockade. If we fly north, we can go around the Fire Nation ships and avoid the blockade. There's no time. This is exactly why I didn't want you to come. It's too dangerous. It's fun. And that's exactly why we're here. The Fire Nation just seems so much better trained. They have so much more military power. And like, it just seems like they have a lot more firebenders. Like, active firebenders. Papa's a warrior. He's putting the team on his back, literally. <laughs> nice. That was cool. Nice. That was without a doubt the best action sequence in the show so far. By a long stretch. That was awesome. Follow me! Do you know where you're going? Nope. Wrong way! Someone pointed out to me that the animation is somewhat inspired by FLCL, the anime. And I'm seeing it more now. Can't you just open them with fire bending? No. I think I can help you out. Sokka is kind of turning into the tactician. He masterminded the uh, the arrest plan with the earthbending thing. Nice. One hundred years ago, Fire Lord Sozin used that comet to begin the war. So the comet made them stronger. Yes. We're getting some history. Stronger than you could even imagine. Fire Lord Ozai will use its power to finish the war. Is that our first glimpse of the Fire Lord? Aang, you must defeat the Fire Lord. But I haven't even started learning waterbending, not to mention earth and fire. But if the world is to survive, you must do it by summer's end. It's a lot of pressure. What if I can't master all the elements in time? What if I fail? I know you can do it, Aang, for you have done it before. When you need to talk to me again, you will find a way. I can help you face the threat, but only if you are ready. I'm ready. Nice. The music is perfect. No! Hey! We got your back. Save your stories for the Fire Lord. As far as I'm concerned, you are all guilty. Take them to the That's why you don't help tyrants. Because they just turn on you later anyway. When it's convenient for them. It's a nice shot. Thank you. 
Wow, that was great. That was on a whole different level from anything in the other episodes. That was exciting. Sometimes shows try to stretch things out, so I really like it when they just give you a lot of bang for your buck. And that episode definitely was that. There was so much going on. You have different competing interests at the same time that all kind of come to a head at one point. And you have Aang learning something, or getting the support he needs, at least temporarily, having the strength he needs to overcome this one obstacle. But you also have kind of the pressure placed on his shoulders for the future that he's going to need to do this big thing. We kind of have a clearer task for Aang, and a clearer vision of the road ahead for him, which is kind of overwhelming. And it calls into question whether or not he can do it, especially considering all the doubt he expressed in the episode right before. So that's really cool. There's so much good stuff in this. Also, I think the action sequences were great. The boat action sequence was my favorite so far. If this is a sign of things to come, I'm even more excited than I was already. See you for episodes 9 and 10 tomorrow. Probably. Hopefully. <laughs>